Hello and welcome to this Blender tutorial. My name is Ben Morgan and in this tutorial I'm going to teach you how to do some simple AI in Blender in the Blender game engine um, using navigation objects. So these objects will always steer towards um, a target object. And in this tutorial I'm going to be using my uh, movement script that I wrote in a previous tutorial. I recommend you go and watch that if you um, don't know what I'm talking about. Basically it allows for uh, it's, it's a script that allows us um, to have our characters move in the Blender game engine using the W, A, S, and D keys. And um, it it's cool because you can reuse it in times like these. So we're going to grab it. Uh, first, we're going to grab our cube on the z-axis and press Control, snap it to the grid, Shift A, add mesh plane, and scale it up. Shift A, add another cube, move it back, and this is going to be named Enemy. And this guy is going to be named Player. We're going to quickly add a new material to our enemy, make him red. We're going to call this material Enemy. That's pink, not red. That's not very evil. And add a new blue material. We can call this Friend or something. We'll make it blue. That doesn't really matter if we do that or not. But first, before we do anything, we're going to go to Blender Game. We're going to scroll over to our physics, and we're going to make these both dynamic objects with collision bounds of box because they're boxes make them dynamic collision bounds box and that's important because later we're gonna have to rely on the rely on the collision of these objects and if that's turned off um, then blender will not be able to recognize the collision of them so we're gonna go to game logic now and with our first with our uh, player cube selected we're gonna do always Python connect them make it true triggering and we're going to do text open text box a uh, text block and we're going to load up that script that we wrote in um, that one tutorial so here it is basically it uh, is some simple input detection and it allows us to move our character so we're going to make this script mouse script basic which is what I named it I press play I can now move but our character is rotated incorrectly so we want this y-axis, the local y, to be facing this way, so we're just going to rotate on the z-axis, press control, and make him face that way. So now the local y is right there. Press play, and we have him moving very speedily like that. Okay, so next what we're going to do is select our foe cube and give him a game property. We're going to make this enemy. You'll see why we do that later. Next, we're going to add an, an always sensor and do steering. And the target object is going to be our player. You can see here that uh, we have some pretty cool uh, we have some pretty cool settings here. We can change the distance at which he uh, stops following him. We can change the velocity that he follows him at, the acceleration, the turn speed, all those things. So if we press play right now. Basically, our guy's always going to be following our cube. That's pretty cool. Now, what if we change the distance to something like 5? What would happen then? Basically, he stops moving when he's 5 blender units away from our character. But the thing is, we want him to touch our character. And our character is 2 blender units wide. So if we press play... Well, actually, we don't want him to do that. So let's, let's put it at 1 interesting he's always going to be pushing our guy okay next we're going to change the velocity to something like 15 see what happens then okay now he's like a boss <laughs> yeah, it's our boss battle at one he's very slow so let's change it to five just so that we have a challenge because our player moves pretty fast too okay turn speed let's mess with that make it 150 now he turns a little bit faster make it 500 super agile now so you can obviously just mess with those um, settings and see what they do but now we're gonna make our the good player we're gonna make him delete himself if he collides with this cube so since we have dynamic um, objects blender will be able to detect the collision or the touch of them I'm gonna do collision because we added a property um, to our enemy called enemy so we're gonna make this property 
enemy. Make sure you spell it correctly. And make an actuator, make an edit object, end object. So basically, if you collide with an object with the property of enemy, delete yourself. So if he collides, he deletes himself. So that's pretty cool. Now, what if we wanted an obstacle for this guy to follow around, uh, to steer around? Because right now, he hasn't had to navigate around anything. So if we were to just shift A, add a cube, and scale it on the y-axis to make a barrier between the two, let's see what would happen. Okay. So he does adhere to collisions, and he always faces them, but he does not know how to navigate around obstacles. So that's one of the downfalls of this. Um, you could make what's called a navigation mesh, which would like basically lead him around these ways. Um, but we're not going to go into that in this tutorial. I just wanted to show you um, the basics of this uh, follow sensor. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. You can see here that we have our character colliding with this obstacle, but he's still trying to touch our um, player character. And when he does, our character deletes himself. So this isn't coding. This is using logic bricks. Um, the code for this, I imagine, is not fairly complicated, but I decided to use logic bricks, a little change from the uh, coding that uh, I was doing before, mostly because the logic bricks make a lot of sense. Um, they're logical, and uh, yeah, they're just easy to use. Um, but I hope you uh, learned something. This um, steering um, actuator is pretty new in Blender. I, I think it was added in 2.6, uh, but it's really cool because it allows us to do something that before was... Um, only possible in scripting um, and we can do it pretty easily so yeah thank you for watching this tutorial I hope you learned something and please subscribe